Hey everybody, Caleb here with a new year and a new season of uh, let's fix up this house. Um, let me show you guys the project for this week and we'll get right to it, right with some more time lapses and the wonderful time lapse music that you guys love so much. So let's get at it. We're heading towards the bathroom here on the first floor of the former butler's pantry. And uh, I have started to remove a few of these vitrolite tiles, which are glass tiles uh, that don't make them anymore. So I'm trying to remove them very carefully. I don't know if we'll be able to reuse them somewhere in the house, like maybe in the basement. Um, however, I don't want to break them because, you know, somebody somewhere can use them and somebody's looking for these tiles, I guarantee it. So figure out a way to get these all off, salvage these all. Luckily they come off fairly easily. And then uh, I gotta work on getting this room completely stripped out. Um, we will be losing the bathtub in here. The toilet will be rearranged. And uh, as much as I really, 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 really love this sink, uh, it's not gonna stay here, um, but I don't know if it can stay anywhere because I just had a look under here and uh, we've got a nice big crack right there. Uh, on the other side as well, it's kind of hard to see, it cracks all the way back up here so I can get my finger in there. Um, so I don't know if that's paint or the cast iron. Uh, I assume this is cast iron, yeah, real rusty there, so cast iron. Um, so we'll see about that. I'm going to try to salvage it. Um, maybe there's a way to patch it because I do think it is a rather nifty sink. Wrong era for this bathroom, but downstairs it would be absolutely perfect. And I think it is really cute, so we'll figure that out. But we do have other things like a little soap holder down here that we can salvage, the toilet paper uh, holder there. Uh, there's a little soap holder here as well. Um, these handles are pretty cool. Um, so there's things to salvage from here and I wanna get them out um, so I can either give them to you guys or find a good home for them. Um, Cause I don't want you know anything I take out of here that I know could be used in somebody else's house and loved by somebody else or if we can reuse it ourselves. I wanna make sure that happens. So slow and steady is the, the rule here. I do have to cut this out. And then uh, these two additional tiny little stacks that I'm not exactly for sure what they're from. Uh, this goes into the butler's pantry. So I know where that pipe is and that pipe's actually lead, which is fun, but uh, shouldn't be a problem to get that out. Um, the main stack here, uh, I suppose you have to start from the top and work your way down. So, that actually runs into the closet upstairs that I have the internet. Um, and actually this slant here, you see, that's actually the maid stair right there. So this is actually under the maid stairs. So we'll figure that out. Also, for those who didn't know, we have a weird little window here, uh, art glass, uh, and the one here. So I think this is uh, from its former life as a butler's pantry. Um, so the, I guess they could figure out what's going on in here. So with some light.
and welcome back. So before we get into what I did in the bathroom, let's go over some of the things that have happened in like the two plus weeks uh, that have been kind of sort of absent because of the holidays. Um, so let's uh, show you guys uh, what I've acquired. First things first, uh, got another no post lamp. Um, she's a little different. Uh, the other two are kind of goddesses. This one's more of a, a peasant lady, I suppose, or a farmer. Uh, she's got a really nice rake there. It's a little bent up, but still quite beautiful. She is a little bit beat up. Um, the base is a little detached uh, down here. Uh, that little bottom ring is actually a marble piece, but uh, where the flowers are right there, it's kind of detaching. So I'm gonna probably solder that and uh, do a little bit of repair here and there. However, overall, she's in great shape. Uh, she would have had a lampshade, unlike the other two. She has like the little lampshade attachment. So I'll have to figure out what kind of lampshade would have gone on something like this. Probably one of those fabric ones that have like the tassels at the end, or at least that's my best guess. Uh, not 100% sure, uh, but I got her really cheap and uh, yeah, she's really pretty. And for the size of her, I mean, you know, there's the, uh, the lucky one and inspiration, I believe is the name of the little boy with the fiddle. And size wise, yeah, uh, there's no comparison. She's much, much bigger. So, you know, pretty cool. I guess the flowers on this, the leaves make this one a little bit bigger. Staying in the same vein here, I also got this uh, alabaster um, bust here um, that I picked up at an estate sale. She's on like a little copper or bronze uh, pediment or, you know, whatever, statue holder thingy. Um, and she's rather gorgeous as well. And again, you know, I really want this place full of lots of beautiful art. And so whenever I find something I really enjoy, um, I tend to pick it up. Uh, again, she was fairly cheap for what she is and uh, I'm quite happy with her. Um, you go, I go to all these other houses, they're full of beautiful art like this, and I'm like, man, one of these days. So starting to grow the collection here slightly, and at some point, this place is gonna be full of beautiful art. Next to it also, I got this little red um, vinegar, or I don't even know exactly what it is. It's like a little decanter bottle. Um, but I assume it would have been something that would have been in a kitchen for potentially wine or vinegar or something like that, some cooking stuff. Again, not 100% sure, but I thought it was beautiful, so. And I think it'll be right at home in our kitchen. That's my plan for it, at least. <laughs> Lastly, for things I found this week or things I've received, is this really, really, really cool little puzzle from the World's Fair. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, 1904 St. Louis held a World's Fair. Uh, so this is from either 1903 or 1904, and it correlates directly with the house. Uh, let me just show you too. It, I'm really, really excited about this. This may be the coolest thing I've found so far for the house. And you guys know I am a nut for anything Hall and Brown because Mr. Brown built the house. And it's a World's Fair souvenir puzzle sawed by Albert, Albert Sawinski, which is the best name if you are sawing things. Um, and then it says, on hand saw, on band saw machine manufactured by Hall and Brown Woodworking Machine Co. St. Louis, Missouri. So this little box contains a little cute little puzzle that makes a little chair and table set uh, that was directly built on my guy's equipment. Uh, and because we know that Hall and Brown was at the World's Fair, and I have photos of that, I'll show those now, we know that this was probably sold potentially at this booth, their little booth. So it's just this cute little thing. And again, I don't know how many of these even existed. This might be one of one, honestly in existence any longer. So I'm gonna take the box, turn it over, pull it out, and you can see this little really well sawed. I mean, Albert, great job on making this little thing. But if we take it all apart, this is a little hard one-handed, of course. You see, there's our little tables, our little chairs. And my best thought is that's a little table. So if I come down here to the side, you can see the cute little tables and chairs. Now, the other wood pieces, I'm a little confused to buy. I don't quite know how they, they all work. There's all these little pieces like this that you can pull out. Um, but I don't know if these would have been like little ottomans or exactly what they would have been for. Uh, it could just be one of those things to make this all fit in the box very well. Um, but these are obviously very clearly chairs. But you know, I mean, this thing being from the era it was, I mean, who knows if Mr. Brown's kids didn't have one of these, if they didn't play with it, you know, if he didn't take one home or maybe Hall took one home. I mean, it's 
it's very possible that a model like this, or maybe this specific little puzzle model, um, you know, could have been in the house. I mean, there's a high likelihood of that, actually. Um, who knows how many of these were made? Um, I obviously take a great, you know, deal of skill to manufacture something like this. And um, to be able to find something like this that's so closely related to a huge part of history for St. Louis, which is the World's Fair, and that's really heavily connected to my house with uh, the Hall and Brown connection. I mean, man, could you, could you find anything cooler? Um, so I am uh, tickled the bits about this. It's, uh, it's just really incredible. It's also made of a really beautiful wood, I don't know. But uh, yeah, and then you just fold it all back up. It goes in its little box. And there you go. This is something like many of the other items I've been collecting, like the dog tags or things like that out of the yard, or things that are very sentimental to the house. This will probably go in that, uh, that case with a lot of those items because it's just so cool. Like, how would you be able to find something like this? And um, actually, my buddy uh, Justin uh, was talking to a friend who mentioned something about having this and uh, had a conversation, and he was willing to sell it to me. So for me, I mean, I don't know if I could get something cooler that directly relates to my house. So very, very pleased with this find. It's the coolest thing. If you can't tell, I'm very excited about it. Um, I've had this for a few weeks now, and I've been wanting to share it so bad. I'm finally glad I can. So this is a really, really cool thing, and I'm so glad to have it. Let's go check out the bathroom. I'll show you what I got uh, done this week. As we come in here, no, I only had really a day and a half this week to uh, get much work, actual work done here. So this is about a day and a half worth of work. Uh, try to salvage as many of the original vitrolite tiles as possible. As you can see, they're all off the walls except for right here. Uh, but I'm going to remove this, what we call a plumbing stack, from that area first. Um, so I can get those tiles out a bit more successfully. As you can see, some of them, like that one right there, that's a nice hairline cracker. Well, that's probably a bit more than a hairline at this point, but it's cracked and a lot of them are like that. Um, just from sitting with, well, you know, the moles moving and everything else, eventually things do break. And as you can see from uh, one of the piles here, we do have a lot of odd shapes and shards. Like this one had like one of the soap dishes or maybe the uh, paper or uh, toilet paper roll holder uh, in there. You can see the uh, soap one here. Uh, whenever they had like this, there were almost always cracks around them. Um, a lot of the more complete pieces are here. Um, and I think these things I'll reuse. These are cast iron, actually. Uh, soap uh, holders and toilet paper ho uh, towel or toilet paper holders and things like that. So things like that I think we'll end up keeping. Um, but I got a lot of this vitrolite and uh, I got to figure out exactly what I want to do with it. Maybe it would be best to make it into smaller blocks, maybe even subway tile, like, you know, two by six or something, little blocks and use those, uh, or use this like that, uh, maybe as a possibility. Um, still trying to work that all out. If I'm, maybe I'll use this in the basement for that bathroom because it fits the era a bit better. So, you know, playing with the ideas about what I can actually do with this stuff, but for sure it wasn't trash. So I kept as humanly much as possible. And I don't know if you can see it in the time lapse, but actually how I ended up doing getting a lot of these off was instead of prying them, I actually took wedges, those uh, shims that I have, wooden shims, put them underneath here and tapped it down with a hammer gently to remove it as delicately as possible. Because again, I don't want to break this stuff. I know they don't manufacture it anymore. And even if I can't use it, somebody can. So trying to preserve that. I don't need the 1920 stuff, but I know somebody else does uh, or I'll use it in the basement. So. That's how that all went. Um, the toilet, somebody used a piece of plywood to prop this up for some reason, not quite sure. Um, but got the toilet out, uh, pulled up most of the wood that's down there, um, got the sink out. The last thing to come out is the tub here, which is still, because I, I can see it from the floor below in the basement. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to remove to get this up. Um, I think it's just held in with gravity though, so as soon as I can cut the pipes and the lines, I should be able to just pull it out with a pry bar, I think. Um, so we'll figure that out. Um, back here, uh, there's a little uh, way to get behind this. Uh, there's like a, a board, a panel box board um, that covers the pipes up going down. Cause this is actually where the stairwell goes down from the kitchen. So that wall's the kitchen, right? This wall's the stairwell that heads down to the basement from the kitchen. 
So back in the stairwell, there's a little panel box back there, and that's where these things come through. And so I wanted to cut that out because this one is stuck. It's the waste one. And I, again, I don't want to break anything, so I'd rather cut the whole piece out as one, cut around the pipes and remove it. Um, I'm already gonna have to do quite a bit of plaster work in here anyways. Um, nice thing though is most of the plaster, at least higher up, is in good enough shape that can probably be saved. Um, so I'm taking this vanity or veneer coat off. So I'm gonna take all the veneer coat off, the paint comes all with it, which is nice. And then I have a good substrate. Uh, I'll use the plaster screw and glue method to put uh, or seal up these cracks and anything that's wibbly or wobbly, I'll screw back in and glue back into the old lath. And then I have so much lath left over from the ceiling uh, here in the hallway that basically from here down, if the lath's shot, I'll replace it and then we'll be able to plaster all back over it. So I think that should go pretty well. Um, so next week for sure, bathtub's leaving. And I know people are gonna be very, very mad at me about this, but this floor has to go too. Um, it's a great looking floor. And again, if this was a 1920s bathroom, I would work my best to try to keep it, but it's not gonna be. I'm gonna use what's called uh, the encaustic tiles or the Minton tiles, I believe is how they're pronounced. Um, really beautiful patterns. I'll put some examples on screen now. Um, but that's how this would have looked, or at least that's how in my head I want it to look. Um, we have some of those tiles actually in the entry of the house. And so I think to match the house's aesthetic, uh, that's the best way to do this. Of course, this bathroom did not exist before. It was not here. This was a butler's pantry. Um, but I want to make it look like it would blend into, you know, the surroundings here. So I don't want to you know, I don't want to mess with it too much, right? Like I do want it to look correct, even though it is not going to be correct at all. So layout wise as well, I want to show you how I kind of want to do this. So obviously we're not going to have a bathtub. This is going to be a powder room only. So bathtub and sink only. Uh, in this little area where the sink was, cause it's kind of popped back. I plan on building some built-in shelves with some of that oak I have from the, um, the, pe the pews that I have, the pews that I bought a while back. Um, I plan on having the sink right here. So this pipe's gonna be in that wall. Uh, I'll have to cut all this out and it's other pipes back here. All these goofy pipes have to be cut out. Um, these two are cast iron. That one from that joint down is actually just lead. So that one will be really easy to remove because lead is super soft. Um, but the sink will go here and over here to the left. So as you walk in to the left will be the toilet. So that's kind of how I have planned laid out with the really beautiful tiles and uh, we'll leave all the windows. I did finally get this window open. So I think a few of you guys have seen this one from the other side, but uh, I finally, that one was painted shut. I think that'll be a Kim project here soon is getting those uh, art glass windows back together. And uh, then we'll have to figure out what to do with that one um, because I'm pretty sure these are both original. Uh, they were probably here in the Butler's pantry. Uh, that one again goes back to that stairwell that goes down to the basement. This underneath, uh, they've dropped the, the bottom of the floor a little bit. They didn't cut into the joist, but they put these boards down there to hold cement. And they pour probably three inches thick of cement and then put this on top of that cement. So I think this is going to be a pain in the butt to remove. Um, luckily underneath the tub, there's nothing. I can actually see the bottom of the tub through the floor. Uh, they have a few boards there kind of holding it on the joists and that's it. So that should be pretty easy. Um, but of course this has to come all up. Then I'll have to probably plywood this whole area with hopefully some marine grade plywood if I can find some. And then I'm gonna drop down some board and we'll do that and put the tile on top of that. And then of course with everything in this house that comes to bath or the kitchen, it seems like a lot of the time they did the beadboard wainscoting. So I'm gonna do the beadboard wainscoting all the way around just like the other rooms to match and mimic it. Uh, and uh, we'll have a marble top sink and a high tank toilet here. So that is the plan for this bathroom and I'm hoping to get it done pretty soon. So that's this week's work. Next week you can expect this place to be ripped to pretty much nothing. Uh, hopefully I can even get the uh, new floor in here first too. But I'm gonna work a little bit on the plaster walls, just getting this veneer coat, all the paint off. And then that way I have, you know, just raw plaster walls to work with here soon. One thing I noticed in here you guys are really going to like is this wallpaper pattern. Uh, it's actually not terribly, terribly intricate, which means it'd be really, really easy to get uh, or for me to paint it back onto the walls. So I think this is probably about, you know, 18, 
90s, maybe, maybe a little bit later, maybe even 1900. But I think it's close enough an era that I could justify painting this pattern on the walls. Um, obviously it's a bathroom, you don't want to use too much paper because paper doesn't handle water that well. Um, but I think I could get this pattern back on the walls pretty nicely and I think it would look wonderful in here. Um, so I think that's the pattern this whole room is going to go. Um, of course, except for the, the ceiling up there, which will be something else. Um, maybe blue because they really like to blow on ceilings. So that's pretty cool. Um, I, I mean, that would be fairly easy. It'll take forever for me to paint each of the individual lines, but I mean, it'll work. I can, I can paint straight lines. That's not so hard. So I thought that was cool. I thought you guys would really enjoy the little decorative elements I found here today. Also, I want nobody to fear about all the old fixtures and stuff that were in here. I've been saving everything. We have the old towel rack here. Uh, it's either cast iron or I think it's cast iron. Uh, here's the, the hooks for that. Um, all the old porcelain knobs and everything like that. So I made sure to make sure to, uh, I made sure that I didn't throw any of this away, that it was all put into a box and safe. So uh, if somebody's missing something or needing taps like this, Maybe let me know. I don't think we have a use for them in the house, but again, I want them to get back to a good home. Um, you know, the second owner put these in and I want to make sure they, they go to some, some good nice place. Also kind of interestingly, or gross, depending on how you look at it, behind some of the tiles behind the sink, I found this little razor blade, which is a Gillette blade. Um, of course, I don't know the era in what, which this was made, um, but potentially Mr. Yeniman, the veterinarian, shaved his beard with this, possibly. Um, how it got behind the tiles, not sure. There's also a bunch of bobby pins back there, but of course they don't have any markings to know how old they were. Um, if anybody has any idea how old this little blade is, let me know. Um, but yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting, so I tossed it in the box. So yeah, that's uh, just to everybody to reaffirm with everybody, I make sure I never throw anything like this away. I always save things like this. I don't want pieces of history to be lost either. Um, but they just don't belong to the history of my house any longer, let's say. So that's this week's project. That's what's going on. But uh, let's really quickly talk about what's the plan for the next six months, because a lot of things have to happen uh, in this six months to it, get to the main goal, which is me moving in, because I really want to be here. More work will be, because if I'm here all the time, I'll just work all the time. And uh, I really like working here, but I have to go home at some point. If I live here, I never have to go home because I'm already home. So I'm hoping that we can do that here in the next six months, hopefully by about June-ish. Um, but in that six months, there's a, definitely a few projects have to be done. Number one for sure has to be done is the electrical. I have to have that 100% complete and I'm hoping by mid-February, all of that's complete. I'm hoping by the end of this month that I have the entire first floor done with electrical. And that includes things like our newel post right here. I'm hoping this is 100% wired up and ready to go by then. I have it 100% complete. All the rooms wired up with all the outlets, all the fixtures, all that stuff. And then I immediately wanna hop into doing more plaster because I have to have cooler weather to be able to do the plaster. And since it's pretty cold right now and it will remain pretty cold, but I can keep it warm enough with the boiler. Um, actually, yeah, that's another thing I didn't mention. The boiler is back on. So because the boiler's on, I can do plaster throughout the deepest, darkest, coldest winter right now. Um, maybe if it hits negative 20, we might have problems, but <laughs> right now it's, I think 12 or something Fahrenheit. I'll put the Celsius conversion and the boilers have it here at about 65. Uh, I don't even really need the hoodie. It's actually making me sweat a little bit. So, uh, you can walk around here to a t-shirt or at least I can within a t-shirt and not have a problem. Um, and we don't have it all the way up yet either. So boilers great. So lots and lots of plaster. I want to make sure I get the bathroom done, the kitchen hundred percent done. Uh, the library and the maid's room or Kim's craft room, 100% done as well. Those are the rooms I'm really dedicated in getting done because they're the ones that are holding us back from getting in. And I want to make for sure at least most all of the plaster in those rooms, at least the base coats are all done, ready to go. And as soon as I can get the uh, central air or the HVAC system in, I can go ahead and put the ceilings up and then skim coat the whole room all in one day and call it, a, call it done. So that's the plan. Fingers crossed I can make uh, that all happen as well. Um, but electrical and plaster are definitely the two big ones. One of the other projects that's gonna have to happen is I want this uh, powder room 100% done, not just 
you know, this little bit or that little bit. No, I want 100% done, all the tile-in, all the built-ins, the, the toilet working, sink working, functional, perfect. Um, that way we can have at least one place to use the restroom up here because that starts becoming a problem. Uh, it does take, it does kind of bum me out occasionally when I have to take time down, lock everything back up, go to the gas station, use the restroom, and then come back because that's been the solution right now, and it's not a good solution. Uh, so having a restroom here, be able to wash my hands and, and use the restroom is imperative at this point. It's been gone too long, so to do that I have to replace the stack, get that little bathroom going. Um, we won't have a shower at first, um, but you know I'm not giving up my other place until I have one. So uh, it, that at least allows me to, he to stay here for longer periods. Probably even start staying the night here, certain nights, uh, just to get more work done. So if I can get that bathroom up, ooh, life will be good. One of the next rooms, depending on if I can or cannot get my um, HVAC system in, or my central air system in, will be the kitchen. Because I think the kitchen is a fairly easy room. I don't have to wait for any of the AC or anything else to, do, like, to go in because it goes through the floor. And basically there's cut holes in the floor to do that. So I don't have to worry about the ceiling. So that means I can lift the entire ceiling in. I can get all the walls done. I can get all the beadboard back up on the walls. Um, everything essentially except for the appliances, which obviously my monitor top and my 1920s uh, quick meal stove both need some work. So those are definitely further down the road, but I could essentially put a, a refrigerator in there, a temporary one, um, and I could put a temporary stove in there. Um, and those are pretty easily done. And uh, so that's a project I think that I'll try to push forward as quickly as possible um, because I can also use that as a kitchen, but I could also use it as a temporary bedroom if I had to. Oh, and also, before I forget, uh, one of the bigger things that's happening will be the start of the mansard roof. Uh, about a week and a half ago, I got contacted by the guy who's doing it, and uh, the blades uh, for all the various patterns of molding up there are being produced as we speak. Uh, they should be in within about a week or two, and uh, then I'll have to pay for all the lumber and uh, make sure my uh, lift is ready to go, and we're going to get up there and we're going to start doing that. We're going to start with the cornice and uh, work our way up. And man, once that th that's done, I know the entire face of the building changes. You know, the, the old girl's got her hat back on and she's ready to go to town or I don't know, some other little goofy saying. <laughs> um, but that's, that's really exciting. I mean, it's, it's really the, the highlight of the building is the mansard. And so to get that back rearranged, to move, to put back together is gonna be a huge weight off my shoulders. I know it's gonna make sure like the neighborhood looks better. When people look at the building, they're like, oh, it's just so beat up. It's gonna be like, oh wow, I see the potential. Well, yeah, once it's put back together, of course you can. <laughs> so um, really, really, really ecstatic about that. So uh, that should be coming up pretty soon. Of course, it will be still slow progress like everything I do. So, um, but it'll be really excited. And I'm really excited about it. So that's it guys. That's uh, the first video of the new season, the first video of the new year. Uh, it's going to be a very exciting year. There's going to be a lot of things done, um, and I can't wait to see them all kind of come together. Um, every little step we take forward in the process of getting this place together, I feel better. Ah, it's, just, it's just good. Every time something happens, it just feels awesome. So, And to know that I'm doing it and that Kim's here doing it and that we're, we're pulling our, everything together and making it all happy again is, is just, I don't know, it's a very accomplishing feeling. And I'm excited to see what this next year brings. Uh, I hope you guys had a wonderful new year. I hope uh, you guys saw your families and everything was good in your world. Um, and if it isn't, I hope it gets better this year for you. Um, so thank you guys as always for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. We'll see you guys again next Monday and uh, take care. Bye-bye.